I have Google Chrome as the ninth thing on my taskbar. To open it, press Windows key 9. Alt E is an echo, B is in Bravo. Arrow over to Google Polar Board to Win Notebook. Tab over to Modern Portfolio Theory with Pi Portfolio Opt. The background for today's video, a viewer of mine, Aaron, asked for me to show Python code for Modern Portfolio Theory. And there were two key constraints. One is I had to use the Pi Portfolio Opt module which I'll be using today. And two, I have to display the results visually, which I will do as well. Let's get into it. First, there's two modules, Yahoo Finance and Pi Portfolio Opt, that are not already built into Google Colab, so I'm gonna pip install those. Shift enter to run that. And while that's running, I can arrow down to these others you can see that it worked and then I have to once I have the installations I have to import all the modules needed so import Y finances YF that is going to allow us to pull data from Yahoo Finance we're going to import the efficient frontier risk models expected returns capabilities from the Pi um, portfolio opt module, import pandas as p as in papa, d as in delta, panels as panel data analytics and statistics, which will allow us to interact with large tables of data with rows and columns and so forth. Import numpy as n as in november, p as in papa, that's numerical python, matplotlib, decimal pi plot as, as plt, mathematical plotting library, to help us plot the results at the end. And then from Pi Portfolio Opt, also gonna import plotting. So you can plot this as well with Pi Portfolio Opt itself. And that's that's a good way to do it. And then I have convex Python optimization, import Charlie Victor X-ray Papai Yankee. And then I'll import uh, Pi Portfolio Opt Decimal Plotting as Plotting. We can we can plot this with Matplotlib, but for today I'm gonna use uh, Pi Portfolio Opt. All right, so I'll press Shift Enter to run that, and it worked. All right, the next thing is I'm gonna pull in ex post data by creating a ver variable called stock underscore data and say, setting it equal to y, de y finance decimal download. And you can see all these tickers that I've added. I'm not gonna go through each of these, but you can also see at the end, I gave a start date of June 1st, 2020 through 2023. Um, 24 June 2023 since today is a Sunday the 25th we can even upgrade that to 25 June 2023 shift enter it should pull in the data for the 30 assets and it did now let's display the data just by typing stock underscore data the variable we created you can see here has all this data for these different stocks. But what we care about is adjusted closing price. So let's tell the algorithm to only pull adjusted closing price. So I'll set stock underscore data variable equal to stock underscore data with with a list as the argument. And in the list, I'm only going to list adjusted close. Then I'm going to display it. Okay, shift enter to run that. And now you can see it's only showing us the adjusted closing price data for the different uh, stocks in our data set. Now I need to calculate the returns. So I'll create a new variable called stock underscore returns based on adjusted closing price data and set that equal to the stock data variable decimal percent underscore change 
with an empty tuple as the argument and one colon for the list. Shift enter to run that. And let's display the stock returns. So you can do stock underscore returns, the variable we just created. And now you can see the returns themselves, daily log returns for each of these stocks. Now we got to forecast expected returns in modern portfolio theory. This video doesn't go too much into detail explicitly into like advanced methods for calculating uh, expected return or forecasting it. For today, I'm just going to do the, the expected return based on the historical average returns for each stock. So I'll create a variable called mu2. Mu means mean will be expected returns dot mean underscore historical return with the, the argument as stock underscore data, that variable within a tuple. I'll print it and I'll type the, the data type as well. Shift enter. And now you can see it's a 64 bit float as the dating data type. And you can see the expected returns based which are the average of the historical returns in our data set for each of these securities you know so we we've got a pretty good mix here companies like bank of america general electric barrick goldman sachs pfizer Procter gamble visa exxon mobile just to name a few and then what happens is i'm going to go down and create the covariance matrix so i'll do I'll create another variable, cove underscore matrix two, equal to risk models decimal sample underscore cove with stock data in a tuple as the argument. I'm gonna print that along with the data type. And you can see the variance covariance matrix of the returns, keeping in mind that the covariance of an asset's returns with itself is just the variance of said asset's returns. So that sort of goes down the middle, but that's the variance covariance uh, uh, matrix, 30 by 30. Since there's 30 assets uh, in the in the portfolio. Next, you want to figure out the weights that you should put into each stock to get the maximum expected sharp sharp ratio. So I'll create a variable called EF. E is an echo. F is in foxtrot set it equal to efficient frontier with mu2 variable as the argument and the cove matrix 2 as the second argument. So based on the expected returns and the historical variances and covariances of, of each stock um, with respect to each other, we can get the maximum sharp ratio. So let's do that. And this actually gives you the weights. Keep in mind, modern portfolio theory is sort of a, a dumb algorithm. It's very sensitive to the data you put into it. So like it's telling us here, don't put any money in ticker symbol A is an alpha. Don't don't put any money into ticker symbol A is an alpha, A is an alpha, P is in papa. Put 28% into Apple because Apple computer over this time period did really well. Um, so. You know you gotta you gotta be careful with these algorithms and they've got to be combined with common sense and good judgment because they can tell you to put nothing into some stocks and then put large amounts of money into others and then i want to display all of that right so so how can i do that well, what I can do is I can do E is an echo, F is in Foxtrot, decimal por portfolio underscore performance with verbose equal to true and a tuple as the argument. And now you can see based on the, the historical, the expected return, which is based on um, historical returns in this case, the expected volatility and therefore the sharp ratio. 
that's how you display it. And now finally we're going to plot the data so that we can see it visually. We have to create a new efficient frontier instance for plotting. So create a variable e is an echo f is in foxtrot underscore plot equals efficient frontier with a tuple and that has three key arguments. Mu2, which we created, the expected returns, co underscore matrix two, the variance covariance matrix, which we created that variable. And then weight bound zero to one. So I'm assuming you can't go short any of the stocks. You can't have a negative weight in each stocks. It has to range uh, from zero to 100. Then we'll plot the weights. So we'll create weights underscore plot variable set equal to efficient frontier underscore plot decimal maximum sharp. And then we'll plot portfolio performance as well with the constraints and add the constraints to the new instance. Finally, we'll go to plot and show the legend and have plt.show as well. Then we'll hit shift enter. Maybe I'll do control minus to back out a little. Okay, so we can see it here. This is what Aaron was looking for, I believe, a plot of the modern portfolio theory itself. So you can see the different assets in the portfolio. But we have the tangency portfolio, which is on the efficient frontier, that gives us our maximum expected sharp ratio. And so a mix of these assets does better than just owning any one asset. One of the assets itself, if you had picked the best asset, it got on the efficient frontier. So a stock picker might say, oh, I'm gonna put all my money into that one asset way on the tail end of the efficient frontier. But actually under modern portfolio theory, the variance of a portfolio of securities is always less than or equal to the weighted average of the variances of the constituents in the portfolio, which means diversification can reduce your risk without reducing returns. So you should own some of the, the high performing assets, but you should also own a diversified mix of all assets to get the best risk adjusted returns. Thanks for watching today. I hope you found this helpful. Please subscribe to my channel. And thank you to Aaron for the great uh, recommendation. Go take this knowledge into the marketplace and use it to be a better coder and understand modern portfolio theory better. Have a great day.